How's it going everybody? Wayne here. I have a whole stack of games, boxes, and manuals for the N64. Let's check them out. I've been trying to make some of my other content, a show me something cool episode, a worldwide game hunting episode, or even a game review, but I've been getting so many N64 games and boxes in the mail, I won't be able to keep an accurate count and everything's going to start to get confusing if I don't keep up with these videos. Alright, so we're only going to be adding three actual games with their boxes to the collection today. And the first one up is South Park Chef's Love Shack. South Park Chef's Love Shack was released in 1999 for the Dreamcast, PlayStation, Windows, and Nintendo N64. It's a trivia game from the show South Park. It's basically a scenic version of South Park for the Nintendo 64, but it also incorporates mini games like Mario Party does. This game is actually pretty fun if you're a South Park fan. If you haven't watched the South Park show, you will be helpless in this game. If you're not so good at the trivia, the mini games will keep you entertained. I wasn't a South Park fan growing up, but I later went back and watched most of the episodes later on. One of the episodes is responsible for one of the top 10 hardest times I've laughed in my lifetime. It was an episode where they put the picture of a butt as a missing child on a milk carton. When the parents had went to Cartman's house looking for their lost butthead, okay. Cartman shut the door in their face and quickly walked away. When Kenny ran upstairs to ask what had happened, he said he thought he blew a funny fuse because he had saw the funniest thing he could ever see. And now he couldn't find anything funny anymore. After I heard that, I lost it. I must have went on a three hour laughing spree and I still laugh to this day. It's not a great game to play by yourself, but it would be fun with friends who have also watched the show. South Park Chef's Love Shack is game number 20 in the collection. And at $12 ship, that brings us up to $2,520. Next up at game number 21, we have Battle Tanks Global Assault. Battle Tanks Global Assault, like its predecessor, was an epic fun-filled tank game developed and released for the N64 by 3DO in 1999. It's a shame the 3DO company went under. Some of my favorite games for the Nintendo 64 were released by 3DO, including the two Battle Tanks games and the trilogy of arming in games. Battle Tanks is yet another game that owns hours and hours of my childhood. This game was fun by yourself, or it was fun with three or four of your friends. Playing solo offered a super fun campaign. Even my sister, who had no interest in video games, was drawn into this immersive game. Although disappointed by the ending of the game, she enjoyed watching all the action. Playing with friends, you could set up bases and see who could break into the other person's base. Global Assault was the second game in the Battle Tank series on the N64. Both are equally as fun. It was awesome how many different weapons your tank could have. Cloaking, making you invisible, swarmers, launching a bunch of missiles at the enemy, grenades, mines, nukes, gun buddies, EMPs, and of course my favorite, guided missiles. Yes, you could just sit in one spot controlling a missile to seek your enemy. This game is an absolute blast. And at $20 ship, game number 21 brings us up to $2,540 for the N64 library. Next up is another 3DO game, Army Men Sarge's Heroes. Army Men Sarge's Heroes was released in 1999 for the Dreamcast, PlayStation, Windows, and Nintendo N64. Army Men was our Call of Duty our battlefield growing up. And here is another N64 game that I have spent hours and hours playing. Like Battle Tanks, it's fun by yourself and it's fun with friends. This game has one of the best tutorials 
out of any game I've ever played, even today. The basic training allowed you to run free, grab every different weapon available in the game, and go to town. Machine guns, grenades, mortars, flamethrowers, grenade launchers, minesweepers, and bazookas. You'd find yourself in gardens or bathtubs. It offered you a fair challenge and left you on the edge of your seat for the entire game. You could hear tanks around, but wouldn't see them right away. Your heart would be pounding out of your chest, wondering where they would pop out. You controlled Sarge as you chased down General Plastro of the Tan Army throughout the game. This game did an excellent job bringing your memories of playing with plastic toys to life. Army Men Sarge's Heroes is game number 22, and at $14 shipped, that brings us to $2,000. $554. Next up I bought a lot of 19 boxes of manuals. Some of them are duplicates but this lot cost me only $38 shipped and it'll be good to get some of the sports titles out of the way. Boxes and manuals only NHL 99, NASCAR 99, NASCAR 2000, All-Star Baseball 99, Madden 99, Madden 2000, Madden 64, Kobe Bryant in NBA Courtside, Mike Piazza's Strike Zone, WF Warzone, NFL Quarterback Club 98, Knockout Kings 2000, Bass Hunter 64. Now for these duplicates, I'm going to be using those to trade for hopefully other sports games that I don't have yet, but I don't know how many people are going to be wanting to trade for standard sports games for the N64. With that lot of 19 boxes and manuals costing us $38 shipped, that brings us to $2,592. But anyways, let's get these games on the shelf. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure to subscribe. I'll be collecting the entire N64 library, complete in box, right here on this show. Also, make sure to leave a thumbs up for 3DO. Until next time, I'm Wayne, and thanks for watching.